The Cubs lost yesterday to the Washington Nationals, officially eliminating them from playoff contention here in 2024. What a disappointment that is. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about Shota Imanaga making the start on the mound for the Cubs today and Kyle Hendricks yesterday, a potential passing of the torch moment for future Cubs legends. Here is your invitation to our show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. My name is Anthony Pasquale. You can find me on Twitter at Ant underscore Pasquale3. Make sure to follow me on there, not only just so you can interact, but so you can see some of my Cubs takes that maybe don't make the show or that we can discuss further on Twitter. I, I know I see some of you guys in my comment section on there, and I appreciate that. And also find the Cubs Baseball Channel on Twitter, on Instagram, and on TikTok. Uh, so keep up to date with us on those different channels as we post some of our content from here and also try to drive up uh, some different content on those Cubs channels as well. But yesterday, the Cubs lose to the Washington Nationals by a final score of 5-1. to one. Uh, The Cubs allowed one run in the second inning. They scored one run in the bottom of the seventh. And the big blow was a four-run top of the sixth for Washington, which included a three-run home run from Joey Gallo. And with that loss... The Cubs are officially eliminated from playoff contention. So in this 2024 season that Tom Rickett said at the beginning of the year, the goal was to win the division. The Cubs are going to fall short on that and miss the playoffs altogether here in 2024. A little bit later on next week, Mick and I are going to discuss why the Cubs didn't make the playoffs, who's to blame and where the Cubs go from here. But basically the fact of the matter is this team for whatever reason, whether you think it was the bullpen or the offense or Jed Hoyer or Tom Ricketts did not do enough to win enough games to get them into the playoffs. And with the loss yesterday, they are officially eliminated from playoff contention on the season. They are still three games over 500. Um, Not great, but they're still probably going to finish with a winning uh, season. But Uh, yesterday was a little bit more of the same from the offense. We've seen these big explosive games. We've seen 15 runs. We've seen comebacks, 17 runs, a 12-0 no-hitter. We've also seen plenty of zero, one, or two-run games, and yesterday included a no-hit bid that went deep into the ballgame. The Cubs only get two hits all day, one of them a solo home run from Patrick Wisdom and the other a knock from Dansby Swanson that did not lead to any type of traffic on the base pass. So the Cubs go down pretty quietly yesterday, losing five to one. They play again today at 120. We'll get into that in a little bit, but one of the inter- most interesting stories from yesterday was that CJ Abrams, the Washington nationals, uh, all-star shortstop was sent down to the minor leagues and it wasn't because of performance. It was because he was caught, um, actually by one of the CHGO reporters, um, via the grapevine at Bally sports casino, downtown Chicago. He was there until 8 a.m. on a day that the Nationals played the Cubs at 120. So got home a little over five hours before game time. And uh, I guess their general manager, Mike Rizzo, says that's not going to fly here. And he was sent down to the minor league. So that was a pretty interesting story to hear about before the game. Um, he went 0 for 3 the game that he showed up uh, after a night of no sleep. Uh, But I just thought was that that was pretty interesting to hear about. And this is also pretty interesting on the marquee pregame show. Pete Armstrong kind of echoed with Jamison Tyone and Craig Council have been saying about the Cubs uh, thinking that they need to be building a 90 win ball club and that maybe they're close, but there's still a pretty big gap between them and the Milwaukee Brewers. And this offseason is going to be all about closing that gap, right? It's going to be about building this team that can go win 90 games. And it's really nice to hear your your three three of your you know organizational members align on this theory that you need to be winning 90 win 90 games to make the playoffs but what's interesting to me is how the cubs are going to do it what what moves are they going to make there's not a whole lot of uh players on the roster that are not under contract that spots are going to be open to improve so you're going to have to pull off some some trades or pull up some prospects or deal the prospects 
it'll be interesting to, to keep an eye on. But what I'm wondering is, did Jed Hoyer or somebody in the organization encourage Craig Council and Jamison Tyone and Pete Carr Armstrong and other players to make these types of statements to really put some type of pressure on to build up this off season, whether it's Jed Hoyer wanting Tom Ricketts to be like, all right, I'll, I'll kick you a little bit more resources so we can get this thing done and get this team where it needs to be, or somebody else putting more pressure on Jed Hoyer to get the job done. Um, otherwise maybe his job is at risk. This is all conspiracy. It's all theory, but I'm curious what you guys think if, if somebody's kind of behind the players and Craig council speaking out so that something gets done this off season, or if it's just the players and the coaches aligning on the fact that they need to be better. And it's interesting to see. Um, and I, I'm excited for this off season. I think a lot of questions are going to be answered and I, hopefully we just get the right answers. Kyle Hendricks was the pitcher in yesterday's ball game. Wasn't particularly sharp, but had, had a solid outing nonetheless. And when he left, he exited to a very loud ovation at Wrigley field. Um, in his press conference after the game, he thanked the fans and he thanked the organization for giving him countless opportunities that he is forever, forever grateful for. So I'm not sure if this will be his last start. I think it does map out for him to start one more time, but nonetheless, he has just been a tremendous cub. And if this is the end of the road with his time in Chicago, uh, kudos to Kyle Hendricks on a great Cubs career that, of course, included being one of the most instrumental parts of the 2016 World Championship winning Chicago Cubs. Cubs play today at 120 against the Washington Nationals to close out the homestand. And no better pitcher on the mound. Shota Imanaga gets the start for the Cubs. He's 14-3 and on the season with a 3.03 ERA, uh, firmly in the conversation for one of the best pitchers in the league. Um, All-star obviously, and then also in the Rookie of the Year and potentially MVP conversation, uh, Cy Young as well. Um, obviously not probably going to win any of those three, but definitely might get some votes when the time comes. Up against Jake Irvin, who has put together a pretty strong season for the Nationals, 10-12 and 12 with a 4.07 ERA. But guys, thanks so much for joining us here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. We always appreciate talking some Cubs baseball with you guys. Keep liking and subscribing getting in those comment sections and following us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. But for now, we will talk to you guys tomorrow, hopefully after a Cubs W. Go Cubs.